Welcome, and greetings to all. I am Shen Long Pen Dragon, the Lore Master. So, as always, a quick disclaimer. I don't own any of the images or the story in this video. The credit for these all belong to their original sources. So, today I'm going to be telling you the legend of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. This is a very well known story, you have probably actually already heard a version of it before, but the one I'm going to be telling is the one from the original 1001 Arabian Nights. So I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, quick wee warning, you may hear some background noise. Um, sadly there's nothing I can do about that, so please do bear with me if you do hear some. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, let us get on with the story. Long ago, in the Middle East, a wealthy merchant was blessed with two sons, Ali Baba and Kasim. Kasim was greedy, and upon their father's death, he took the business, and as well as most of their father's hard-earned money. Ali Baba himself was not bitter towards his brother, and was content to marry a woman of poor standing, and become a woodcutter by trade. One day, while working out in the forest, Ali Baba came across a group of what he could only assume were bandits standing before a cliff face. Fearing for his life, the young woodcutter hid but kept a close eye, wondering what the bandits were up to. One of the bandits stepped forward towards the cliff and shouted that famous phrase, Open Sesame! Much to Ali Baba's disbelief, a rock slid across the cliff face, revealing a cave. The forty thieves disappeared inside, carrying treasure. When they emerged, the leader cried, Close Sesame! And the rock once again slid back into place, as if there had never been an opening at all. When the forty thieves had vanished, Ali Baba made his way to the rock face. Open Sesame! He tried hopefully, and the cave door slid open. Entering the cave, Ali Baba found that it was piled high with treasure. Coins heaped upon coins, treasure boxes, jewels, crowns, precious art artifacts. It was a treasure that not even a sultan could have dreamed of. Hoping he would not live, live to regret this decision, Ali Baba stole a single sack full of coins. He desperately needed the money, and after all, if these were so rich, they probably wouldn't notice such a meagre amount going missing. When Ali Baba returned home, he showed his wife what he'd found, and then hid the coins. He then went to his sister-in-law and requested to borrow a set of scales in order to measure some grain that he had recently purchased. Suspecting that the grain was not what it seemed, Ali Baba's sister-in-law, although agreeing to give him the scales, placed wax upon it, hoping to find out what exactly it was he was truly measuring. When Ali Baba returned, a set of scales. It was the sister-in-law found a single coin sticking to the wax. Having informed her husband, Kasim then bullied Ali Baba into giving up the location and knowledge of the treasure. That night, greedy Kasim led his donkey to the cave intending to steal everything that he could carry. Yet, much to his horror, he became trapped 
for he could not remember the words to open and close the door. Cursing his ill luck, he could only wait and hope that his brother found him first. But as it would have it, karma comes around, for when the thieves returned that morning, they was to find Kasim huddled in the cave with his donkey, clutching their treasure. Angered, they killed the greedy merchant, chopping his body into pieces and, stu and putting them on stakes outside the cave entrance, warning anyone who would dare try to steal from them again. Fearing the worst, Ali Baba went looking for his brother, only to find his remains at the entrance to the cave. Grief stricken over the loss, Ali Baba took his brother's remains back to his family home, where he met a slave girl, Morjina, who had been working for Kasim. With her help, Ali Baba was able to convince the family that while looking for the cave, Kasim had been afflicted by some illness or curse, and while, and while being desperately ill in bed, had died. Morjina then paid the famous tailor, Baba Mustafa, to stitch the body back together, leading him to Kasim's house while blindfolded. In doing so, Ali Baba was able to give Kasim a proper funeral. When the forty thieves returned to their cave, it was to find that Cassine's body had vanished. Realizing that their secret was known to at least one other person, they set out in pursuit, determined to find and kill the perpetrator. One of the thieves found the village and found a man who claimed that he had restitched a body back together. This was none other. And Baba Mufasta. Baba Mufasta was once again blindfolded by the thief and asked to retrace his steps. And in doing so, the tailor was once again able to find his way back to Kasim's house. Pleased with himself, the thief marked Kasim's door and then left to inform his boss. Loyal Morgina knew that something was wrong, and so marked every door in the neighbourhood. When the thief led the rest of his company to find the house again, they found that every single door had been marked, and they could not identify the correct one. Enraged, the leader of the forty thieves had the man killed on the spot, and then they retired back into the countryside, and a second thief was sent out. This time, Baba Mufasta led the second thief again to the house, and the thief decided to knock out a chunk out of the doorstep. Morgina once again intervened, knocking a step out of every one of the doorsteps along the houses of the neighbourhood. And so the second thief was also killed for his failure. Determined that this time there would be no foul ups, the leader of the forty thieves went in person and memorized the entirety of the house from the outside. Pretending to be an oil merchant seeking hospitality, the leader of the thieves made friends with ba Ali Baba and requested to have uh, to stay the night. Ali Baba believed the man's story, for he was indeed carrying a jar of oil as he so claimed. The other 38 jars, however, were not filled with oil, but the remaining thieves. Their plan was a simple one. Wait until nightfall, when everyone in the house was asleep. Then silently, they would creep out of the jars and murder everyone in their beds before fleeing into the night as if nothing had happened. Yet, Laurel Margina would once again save the family, for she had found out about the thieves' plan. 
waiting until the thieves themselves were asleep in the jars so that they would be fresh for the night. Morgina poured burning oil on them, killing all but the leader who managed to escape. Grateful for all that she'd done for him and his family, Ali Baba saw fit to give Morgina her freedom. And thus, Morgina would continue her life as a free woman in service to Ali Baba's household as a paid servant. Many years passed, but the leader of the thieves did not give up on his dream of getting revenge. Establishing himself as a merchant, he befriended Ali Baba's son, who had recently taken over the family business. By invitation, the leader of the thieves was brought into the household for a, f uh, for a dinner. Morgina recognized him and decided to entertain the family with a sword dance. Faster and faster she danced, twirling the blades in her hand, till finally she lunged forward, plunging the dagger into the heart of the thief. Outraged Ali Baba demanded what the meaning of this was. When hearing Morgina, uh, Morgina's reasons, and realizing that once again he and his family had been saved, he was eternally grateful. Ali Baba was so grateful in fact that he offered her his own son's hand in marriage. Accepting the proposal, the happy couple would go on to live out their days peacefully. And so ends the legend of Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please remember to like and subscribe for more lore, myths, legends, and stories. I do apologize in the delay in getting this video out, I did have the slides ready to go quite a while ago, but as I'm sure everyone will appreciate, life does take over. So in the uh, next video I'm going to be doing Tiamat and the Bowl of Heaven. These are two different stories but they are quite short so I'm going to include them into a single video. Now a lot of people might be wondering why haven't I do not done Aladdin yet? Well that's quite simple because Aladdin is such a well-known story there really is no point in doing it and because as most of people from my generation and probably our parents have seen or younger siblings have seen the Disney animation of Aladdin is actually fairly close to the original story so if you do want to see sort of like a light-hearted version of the story then that's actually a pretty good one to watch otherwise there are hundreds of other movies books miniseries and whatnot quite a lot of which are actually quite close to the original story so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will not be doing Aladdin's story unless it is requested, then I might change my mind, but we'll see. That's all for me from today, ladies and gentlemen, so until next time, I am Shenlong Pendragon, and remember, knowledge is power. <laughs>